listen now to read what was really going on at the Bush Hussein meeting in our newsroom tonight, Boston University professor Farouk Elbaz. He is a former science advisor to the late Egyptian President Anwar Sadat, and he knows King Hussein well. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, what do you make of this meeting today? Uh, King Hussein did not appear to be uh, very happy leaving Walker's Point today. Yes, indeed. Uh, the king uh, came out uh, rather subdued uh, from what I know of him. And uh, it is really one of two things. Either there is something very tangible and very important that is working from behind the scenes that neither party would like to speak about at all, and the king want, did not want to say a word about it in case it gets out in the media and gets fouled up, or that, that first one is right now to me maybe unlikely. Uh, the other uh, way is that perhaps the, uh, the king found out that uh, President Bush has taken the very strong stand and uh, the, the situation has reached perhaps the most dangerous level it has as yet. Knowing the king and knowing that he has enjoyed close ties with the United States, why should he want to threaten that friendship now? Why should he want to side with Saddam? What does he have to gain? Uh, he's not really siding with Saddam Hussein at all. He has already mentioned the fact that he is going to stick uh, to the United Nations uh, resolutions. He is, continues to be a friend of the United States. He just wanted to find a resolution before the outbreak of war from which there is no return. But isn't he in fact trying to play both sides here to keep Saddam happy on his border and to not antagonize the United States? There is uh, some of that, but the, the basic uh, situation as far as he's concerned is really to try to find a solution before the outbreak of war so that whatever that might take, he was willing to uh, do it through his own initiative. And if this initiative is not going anywhere, I personally believe that we might be hearing about some initiative from Egypt. President Mubarak has been very successful in his move and he has a first-class team working with him at this time and I think the next move might come from Egypt. King Hussein has continued to press for an Arab negotiated settlement but at the same time he acknowledges that the Arab countries cannot agree exactly on, on how to achieve that. Uh, so he has, I guess, been trying to um, keep both sides, as already had mentioned, happy. Do you think that through uh, being perceived as Hussein's spokesman, he may develop an image that it's very difficult to shake in the American mind. No, I don't really think so. I think most Americans know the uh, king for the longest time, and uh, they also know the position where he is in today, knowing that his economy is in bad uh, shape, and I'm sure that was brought up in the discussions with President George Bush. So in the final analysis, the king will still be on the side of an Arab solution to this uh, problem. Only God knows at this time where this is going to lead. So you feel that at this time he does not want to alienate the Americans, but yet he must watch out for his economic problems as well back home. That is very true, because he really is uh, between a hard uh, a rock and a hard place. Okay, thank you. That is President Farouk Elbaz. Coming up... Uh, we do have five reserve units, and contact with them has indicated nothing business as usual, uh, per se, but as you know, things can change very quickly in this, this type of situation. Major Early says there has been no apparent increase in recruitment because of the Middle East crisis, although he has received calls from concerned parents who wonder if their sons or daughters are being shipped out. Hardy? Some thoughts on today's developments. We're joined tonight by Massachusetts Senator John Kerry. He's in Boston. And from our newsroom, Farouk Al-Baz of Boston University, an expert on the Middle East who knows King Hussein of Jordan. Senator, let's start with you. Uh, do you think the temperature has been uh, raised or lowered a bit today following the meetings at uh, Kennebunkport? Well, it's either stayed the same or gone higher, unfortunately. I, I think that uh, the situation grows slightly more stalemated and ominous rather than better. Uh, I think we have to hope that there are some diplomatic channels being pursued or some opportunities that uh, will cool things down. Farouk El Baz, there are some hints that there are indeed back-channel efforts, the, the non-public diplomacy, if you will, uh, to try and, and defuse this crisis. Yes, indeed. The, the potential still exists for something working from behind the scenes that neither uh, King Hussein, neither uh, President Bush would like to bring to the fold at this time in case it gets out in the media and goes out of hand. However, the uh, situation as it is today, we think that there is an improvement because of the fact that uh, King Hussein has conveyed to President Bush that Jordan is sticking to the uh, United Nations Security Council resolution. So this is a, an important development from today's meeting. Senator Kerry, do you think that, that as we get all of these men, all of this firepower in the Persian Gulf region, that the, the, the chances of something going wrong uh, and, and leading to gunfire increase? 
Well, that's, that's the reason that I suggested that today may raise the temperature. I think the fact that uh, King Hussein is indeed uh, indicating he's going to help to tighten the noose somewhat uh, begins to corner uh, Saddam Hussein in a very public way that, that creates the possibility for a mistake or for an irrational choice. Obviously, one hopes that won't happen. Uh, but uh, I, I, my sense is that uh, uh, the risks uh, are there, that something uh, uh, unwarranted or uncalled for or not hoped for could in fact happen. I, I think, though, at the same time, that as the noose tightens, uh, the likelihood of, of the Iraqis themselves beginning to spur the waters a bit and change the dynamics could also occur. Farouk El Baz, uh, do, do you think that, uh, that, that uh, well, let me, let me back up a step. King Hussein said following his meeting with the president today that it was a frank and open discussion. That's usually diplomatic code for uh, some pretty tough language. Do you think that the president uh, uh, read the King the Riot Act today over, over the port of Aqaba? Well, I believe that uh, President uh, George Bush is uh, playing President Ronald Reagan right now. He's taking a very tough stand. He said he announced his position. He has the four points that he wants to achieve, and he wants to achieve them before any discussion with uh, President Saddam Hussein. So I think he repeated these very clearly to say that I am not going to make any concessions to Saddam Hussein unless all of my points are met. So I think that is part of the, the, the meaning of the language that we heard today. Senator, some, some ominous news today about foreign nationals in both uh, Kuwait and Iraq. This report that American and British nationals had been told to report to hotels for possible movement to Iraq. What should the United States be doing about that? Well, I think we did the right thing. I think we played it uh, not escalating the rhetoric too much, but on the other hand, sending a clear message about uh, how United States citizens are supposed to be treated and how we expect them to be treated uh, in another country. And I think the president sent the right tone on that. Uh, clearly, that is another ominous sign, and uh, uh, the possibility of people being turned into internees only raises the heat here more. So uh, my hope is, obviously, he'll read the message, and that won't happen. Farouk el do you believe that, that the Americans uh, are, are, in effect, hostages in this situation? No, I really don't think at this uh, stage we can consider them hostages, because I think the, uh, the Iraqi government recognizes very well that uh, America is not going to stand for, uh, for hostage-taking. And I think uh, holding the Americans in one place sometimes is better safety for them. And uh, right now, the fact that, that, that we know that some, there are some Americans in an Iraqi hotel, and at this stage, it really is better for them and it's safer for them. I do not know about the developments in Kuwait yet. I really cannot comment on it. Thank you. Farouk El Baz and Senator John Kerr. Thank you. Margie? And plenty more to tell you about tonight here on News 7 tomorrow in the Gulf. Hello again. There's a lot of news to digest tonight. The evidence is not there. That from Arab League Ambassador Clovis Maxud. A local university professor was watching the Hussein Bush meeting with a great deal of interest today. Farouk El Baz knows the king and has met with Iraq Saddam Hussein. He joins us this evening from his home in Concord. Good evening. Thanks for your uh, assistance and your comments again tonight. Do you think, based on what we heard and saw today out of the Bush-Hussein meeting, that the diplomatic effort to solve this crisis has been set back? It may have been uh, set back a little, but I don't really think it is uh, completely out of the question. I think there must be, right now, all kinds of uh, channels that is being dug or open to find a uh, solution out of the crisis. Well, let, let, let's talk about a couple of those. Uh, you think Egypt may have something to do with this, and uh, Hosni Mubarak, the president of Egypt? I really think so, because uh, President Hosni Mubarak uh, takes initiatives, and in this particular case, he feels very strongly for the freedom of the Kuwaitis, and he feels very strongly for the need to get Iraqi troops out of uh, Kuwait. The Kuwaiti government has been a, a government uh, of, uh, that had a, a, a great deal of support by the Kuwaiti people, and that aggression was uncalled for. And uh, so President Mubarak will now begin to figure out a way out of it before uh, hostilities break out. So I really think he must be right now with his team working on a next, the next initiative. Do you think in any way that he may have been undercut early in this crisis, two and a half, some maybe perhaps three weeks ago, when he uh, first acted as an intermediary between Iraq and Kuwait? 
He was, and uh, right now uh, the Iraqis are saying, well, President Saddam Hussein never told uh, President Hosni Mubarak that uh, we were not going to attack uh, Kuwait. And uh, I really think that that's, that's not uh, true. And uh, the President Hosni Mubarak was uh, hurt by the fact that he was uh, mistrusted and uh, that he was not given the proper uh, situation. And he feels now, even though Egypt would lose from uh, uh, animosity with Iraq, and there are almost a million Egyptians living now in Iraq, and the Iraqis could hurt them. But I think uh, President Hassan Mubarak is going to take the stand in support of the people of Kuwait. Thank you very much, Farouk al Baz joining us from Concord tonight. And again, we leave you this evening with a bit more on that piece of good news we've told you about, the Saugus Mother.